In this video, we will play with the tools in Illustrator, take a tour of the workspace, and save our work. So first, we will open up Illustrator either through the Creative Cloud app or by searching for Illustrator on your computer. If you followed the previous video on setting up your preferences and workspace, then you may already have a document with two artboards ready to go. If not, come over and click Create New. Here is the one that we made in the last video. Or you can come over to Print, and then we can name our document. I know that it is the Play and Workspace document. I'll change to Inches just for something familiar. Our orientation will be Landscape, and we'll choose two artboards. We can skip Bleed and change to the RGB color mode, and then click Create. If you haven't already, I encourage you to start by playing around with the tools and experiment with what they can do in Illustrator, but watch out for the Perspective Grid tool, this icon here. If this tool pops up, it can be very difficult to close, particularly if you have switched to a different tool. But there is a shortcut on a Mac. You can hold down the keys Command, Shift, and letter I, or PC, it's Control, Shift, I. If your screen doesn't show all of your tools, go to Window Workspace and set it to Essentials Classic, and you'll have the double row of tools in your toolbar. Next, I'm going to move over to the left artboard and click, and then down here I can choose Fit on Screen so it zooms into that first artboard. If you go to the right column, the fourth icon from the top, and click and hold, you'll get some fun line styles to start you out with. And you don't need to copy what I am doing. You can do whatever creation you would like to, but I'm just showing you some fun tools and how to use them. So I'm just sketching out a line going across using that line segment tool. And then I'm going up to stroke to make the line a little bit thicker. I'm drawing another line and I want that to be thinner. So I am just going up to stroke and changing that to a smaller point. If your screen moves on you, you can use these handles to move it back into place. Now there's a rectangular grid tool. This might be a tool that you would think, what would I use this for to make some sort of chart, perhaps? Well, I'm gonna use it to help create a tennis court, for example. And I love using the different colors to change up these designs. We've got the Polar Grid tool, another tool that looks like you would maybe only use it if you are doing some sort of graph, but we can get creative and use it for a different subject. Again, playing around with those colors. The Spiral tool is a lot of fun. I like to use it to create clouds along with the Arc tool, so you'll see me do that in just a moment. Now, unlike the Polar Grid tool, for example, the Arc tool and Line Segment tool are very, very useful and very user-friendly. If the Arc is going in the wrong direction, hit the F key and it will flip it to the right direction. For some reason, mine keeps zooming me into this different screen. I'm just going to escape to go back. And I'll try that again, hitting the F key, and hopefully it doesn't zoom me in. There we go. I don't know why that wasn't working. Now, if I don't like the way that the line is drawn while it is still selected, I can tell that it's selected because it's got those two blue uh, boxes at either end. I can just hit the delete or backspace key on my keyboard. Two other tools that are really helpful are these arrows. The black one is the selection arrow tool, and you can use it to move something that you've drawn. You can also rotate and reshape using that black arrow tool so that I can go back and fix this to make it look a little bit more round like a cloud. In the left column of your toolbar, the sixth icon down, if I hold and click under the shaper tool, I have the pencil tool. This is a great tool where I can do some free form hand drawn designs. I'm going to use it to draw two tennis players holding their rackets. And please do not giggle at my drawings. I'm trying my best using my mouse. I've been using the stroke colors to outline everything, but now I have a closed shape. I can use the fill color to color it in with blue. 
And I will just keep on drawing while I tell you how to undo something that you want to get rid of. So if you've made a drawing and a line or shape that you don't like, you can always go up to edit undo to delete that or step backwards. Or if it's something that you drew a while back, you can use that black arrow, the selection tool to click on it, select it, and then you can hit either delete or backspace on your keyboard and it will delete that, that uh, object that you had selected. Next, I want to show you over in the toolbar, you have these shape tools. If you click and hold on the fifth icon down on the left, the rectangle tool, it will bring up a bunch of other shapes that you can create. So I'm going to do a sky by making a large rectangle shape starting from one end of the artboard and going across, I can change the fill color to blue. Oh, but it's covering over everything else. So I'm gonna right click on that shape, go to arrange, and I'm gonna send it to the back. So that's how you can move things forward or backward within the space. Now I'm just going to fast forward this screen recording while I tell you about the next few steps. So once you have your design, you are going to do a screenshot of your work. And we're gonna put that screenshot into the next artboard. And then we're going to talk about the workspace and take a little tour of the artboard. We will label the artboard so that you'll know the different sections and areas that I will refer to in future videos. Okay, excellent. I'm sure you came up with some great designs. Now, if your workspace ends up a mess, go to Window Workspace and then Reset Essentials Classic to put everything back into its place. Let's take a full screenshot of our work. So on a Mac, you're going to click on your keyboard, Command, Shift, and the number three. Mine gives me a little preview in this bottom right corner, but if I minimize Illustrator, in just a moment, I will see that screenshot loaded onto my desktop. There it is. Now I'll show you how to do this over in a PC. So here I am on my PC with the same file, and I'm gonna use the snipping tool. That's the icon for it, but let's go to our search and find snipping tool, open it up. I have some choices here with this arrow. I could do a rectangular snip, but I'm gonna do a full screen snip. Usually it opens up in this other panel, and I can scroll down and see that I did indeed get the full screen. So I will go and save this. I want to save this over to my desktop which is already defaulted here. I could choose it from the panel if I needed to. It's called Capture, that's fine. I'll just go ahead and save it. Close out of the snipping tool, collapse Illustrator, and here it is on my desktop. Back over on my Mac, I'll open that document, and let's scroll over to the second artboard. We're gonna place that screenshot. So go up to File, Place, and then locate your screenshot, which is most likely on your desktop. You will click place and notice that it loads the icon into your cursor. And then if you just click, the file size might be much larger than your artboard. We're gonna edit undo and go back to file place. We'll show you another way. Select your screenshot. And this time when your cursor is loaded, you're gonna click and drag out a bounding box and it will place the screenshot in that box. With it selected, go up to the control panel and click embed. That way the image will be stored within this project. I'm on a public computer and the image could get deleted from the desktop. So embedding it ensures that it doesn't disappear next time I open this file. Now we're gonna label your workspace using some text and symbols. I'm gonna grab the text tool. This entire Illustrator screen is called your workspace and we're gonna label the parts within it. Now we're going to grab some symbols as well. Over in your collapsed panel, you will see the symbols tool. If you don't spot this icon, then go up to window and then select symbols to open it up. When this pops up, click on the libraries, which is in the bottom left corner, and then select arrows. You can pick any of the arrows that you'll want. We'll end up using six arrows total. And all you do is you click and drag them onto your artboard using your selection tool, that black arrow tool. And you can move and resize them as you like. 
And you can use that same black arrow tool to go to the corner edge and rotate them into place. If you decide that you are going to use the exact same arrow with the same shape, there's a shortcut to make a copy. If you have it selected and then hold down the Option or Alt key, you can see your cursor turns into these double arrows. I'll do it again. See the double arrows? And then I drag it out and then release and it makes a copy, that, which I can rotate and then adjust as needed. Do it one more time to make a copy. And now we've got our six arrows. Let's change over to the Type tool. You can adjust your font size and color to anything that you would like. You are already familiar with the menu bar and our control panel up top. You also know a lot about the toolbar already. And of course, you know about the artboards. Down at the bottom here, this is called the status bar. And over on the right hand side, let me close these so that we can see a little bit better. Over here, these are called our panels and some of them are open and some are collapsed panels. Okay, this looks wonderful. I'm just cleaning things up a little bit here. Our next step is going to be to save our work. So we'll go up to File, Save As. And, oh, I forgot I wanted to show you. Up here in the tab on our screen, do you see this little asterisk symbol? That means that the work hasn't been saved yet. So if you've downloaded the Creative Cloud app, you should see that here. And I have everything listed into folders. Oh, if you're not seeing this expanded, you can hit this caret and it will expand even further. And I can see I'm on my Creative Cloud files. I have a folder here, but if you didn't have a folder, you can come down and create a new folder. I'll just name this one Play and click on Create. And with that folder selected, we want to save it as a .ai file for Adobe Illustrator. I always save it as my first name, last initial, underscore, and then what it is. Sharing documents is very common these days, so attaching your name to your files is important. We don't want to give it generic names like document one, document two. Here, this is all defaulted correctly, so you just click OK. Final step, closing everything down, go to Illustrator, quit Illustrator. Now, if you see this pop up about your clipboard, you might have copied something at some point and it wants to know if you want to save it. Click don't show this again and go ahead and clear clipboard. And now that's how you use some of the tools, identify the areas of the workspace and save your files in Illustrator.